Welcome to RSVP. Listen to the show at your own risk. We will be discussing all taboo subjects like religion, sex, violence, and even politics. You should be ready for controversy, disagreements, face-offs, and maybe some downright rumbles. Well, sit tight and get ready for this week's episode. And by the way, if you're squeamish about obscenities, don't listen to our fucking show! Hey, everybody, it's Diane Daniels. It's the RSVP show. Oh, taboo topics. We talk about taboo topics here. And I've got a beautiful, sexy, sultry co-host. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I offend you, Bernadette? Huh? I love We're, keep going, keep we're going, going to be talking rolling. about political freaking over the top correctness <laughs> that is just how crazy it is out there now. And uh, we're going to be I, like, I is this enough already? Is this way over the top? Is it appropriate? And that's what we're going to be talking about today. The absolutely crazy world of politicalness. Bernadette Desmond, my beautiful co-host in Australia. How are you, love? I'm good, Dulce. Yourself? Awesome. Always awesome. I know. Have, I haven't had a cracker week. Excited about this show. Did I you mean, just you know, call me a just cracker? Some... No, I said what? I... <laughs> oh, God, what? Woman. I said I've what? had a cracker week. <laughs> oh. I'm like, come on. We didn't even start the show. Are you already being racist? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, love. No, no. I... Cracker over here means something completely different, okay? Cracker uh, over here means like bloody uh, rip snorter, fabulous. You know, he's go, he's trying to get me killed over here. All right. <laughs> uh, watch it. I'm going to grab my fanny. Keep it up. No, no, you mimsy dolls. <laughs> get onto your mimsy, not your fanny. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> Is anybody offended by that, that I use the word Mimsy? I don't know. Nobody even knows, unless they watched our show. <laughs> they don't even know what the hell that is. Well, they need to get educated hey, then because Go watch I'm the Vagina you. Show. Come on. Yeah, the Magnificent Vagina. That's right. Come on. Oh, uh, and if you're listening to podcasts, today, get back and listen to the Magnificent have Vagina have Show. Aren't we? Today we're just going to have some fun. We're going to try not to get, like, you know, too serious today. We're just going to have some fun because I don't know about you, but I've had a gut full of all this political correctness stuff. I can never stand the bloody political correctness card anyway before all of this happened, right? It used yeah. to give me the shits then, but it's fully given me the shits now. <laughs> <laughs> it's out of control. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> it's out of control. It's like I feel like i got to carry around a meter now. All right, I got to, like, know. if somebody says something, I got to put the meter up against them. <laughs> Where are you, you on know. the political correctness meter? Let me say. No. You, you know what? You know what? You're full of shit. You know that that's not all you're going to say. You're going to be saying heaps more than that. Now, come on. <laughs> I am, It's got me crazy. I can't even think straight. I know. I posted up on our Facebook thing, I don't, I don't know, a Facebook page yesterday or the day before. What we were talking about. Did you see my comment there? I go, this is going to send die off the Richter scale, people. <laughs> the Richter scale. Oh, yeah. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Uh, All right. So know, we got some I funny know. things to start off with because you know how we love to stop funny people. It's just we do, it's always yeah, good to yeah. laugh and smile. It, it, that's what makes my day burn is if I can make one person in the world smile or laugh, that's I've accomplished my day. So yeah. you ready? And, and I, it's why we do the show too, right? Because we make each other laugh and we make oh. each other smile. I mean, you know, life can get so bloody heavy. It's so serious. It's so cool. Like, you know, for us, you're in the US, I'm in Australia, you know, and we get together and we talk a bit of shit and we talk about some serious stuff. But the whole time we do it because, I don't know, I guess it's entertaining and it's it's to make people laugh because, let's face it, we are the funniest people we know, right? <laughs> Yeah, right. I know <laughs> the funds we need. We know. But, you know, on this show, everybody has an opinion. 
and yep. everybody on the show is going to respect everybody's opinion. You don't have to agree with it, but you sure as hell nah. going to respect it because everyone is entitled to an opinion and we're not going to go oh, Google Gaga. We're get over the meter on political correctness, right? No, no, exactly. And I think also, too, for you and I, it's about being able to express that. Like, we do not always agree. And honestly, our show's um, organic. So who knows? We could be getting into it today if we don't even really know it yet, right? Um, <laughs> I know. And it's, it is. It's about, it's about listening to each other and about and having that opinion and being able to express yourself and not being vilified just because you happen to think differently or feel differently about somebody else's viewpoint. If people didn't think differently, we would never have any of the inventions that we have today, any of the advancements in medicine, any of the advancements in anything. Thank God yeah, people or, think differently. Or, yeah. or, or Thank excitement. God for different nationalities, different races, different religions. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. It'd absolutely. be pretty damn boring with one yeah, kind of person exactly. around, wouldn't it? Yeah, I mean, imagine if, like, there was just all of me walking around the universe. Oh, stop it now. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> or all of you just walking around the universe. The world uh, would blow up if it was all of me walking around the universe. <laughs> there would be no universe. It'd blow up. <laughs> all right, I'm yeah, back to I the know. funny pictures. I can imagine. So, I got one for Let's you. Get into and it. Here's the first one on our political correctness stuff. Yep. We're going to be watching this old lady. All right. And yeah. so in the upper portion, uh, the woman is calling the person uh, blah, 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 blah. I can't read it. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> yeah, I can't read it either. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, the old lady is like moving her glasses and was like, what would you call me? So it's like, come on, people. Come on, people. Uh, Come on. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I've even with my glasses on, I can't read that either. But the pictures, it sort of like, right. it says that it's funny, right? I'm going to pull out my magnifying glass. Yeah, get out your magnifying Oh, do your magnifying glass. I want to see that. A backwards <laughs> ghost space go, uh, dust bunny. A backwards ghost space. Ba dust bunny that's dust bunny because of her hair i'm sure because she's old you know so there you go and now well, what, like, what? Say, first of all what she don't even know what? understand what the woman is saying to her i could tell you that that little lady does not even understand what she was saying so she couldn't have been what offended is it? what's a dusk bunny i don't know what a dust, dust bunny, bunny is all right, so you know around your house, if you get uh, a little bunch of dust that's all together, it could have some hair in it or little yeah. flecks of dust and stuff, and it's all together and it runs across the room with the wind? Yeah. yeah. That's a dust bunny. Oh, my God. What, what okay. do you call it? Oh, I don't oh know, God. just shit in a corner dust. that needs just cleaning dust. up. I don't know. <laughs> we don't, you don't we have actually a name for it. don't have, I don't believe we have anything for that. All right, sorry. Well, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Dust bunnies. But a dust bunny, I'm going to watch out for those dust bunnies because they sound a touch dangerous to me. They are very dangerous, okay? Things, thing, things that are running across your floor just randomly like that. So yeah. I'm going to keep and an if, eye and out for those dust bunnies. If my hair bunnies. look like it, I'm going to be very offended. Don't you call me that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. What do you got yeah. for me? What do you got? Um, what have I got? Oh, look, this is a little bit, you know, like I love country music. I love lots of different music genres. Okay. But originally I'm from the country, so I'm a country chick. All right. And anyway, I love, love the, love country music and I love the Dixie chicks, right? Yes. Yes. So, me too. And this is about the Dixie chicks officially changing their names from the Dixie chicks to the chicks. And we've got Tom Hanks down the bottom going, and just like that, everybody knows who the Dixie Chicks are and that they still exist. Yeah. Right? Because the Dixie Chicks have not released an album for 14 <laughs> years. Right. Wow. And this release and changing their name just so happens to coincide with the whole changing, like, you know, and dropping this to support Black Lives Matters and to get it, you know, against racism, et cetera, et cetera. And they've also just coincidentally 
released a, a protest song which is based around the B BLM protest called March, March, March. Right. So I am sorry, Dixie Chicks, now the chicks, but you've lost me because I think this has actually got nothing to do with you supporting Black Lives Matter or anything like that. I think it's got to do with you releasing an album and releasing a song and taking advantage of a, muse, a, a movement. It, just like so many of the things that are happening and, today because of that. Yeah, and I, Tom I Hanks I don't see what was wrong with that either, Dixie. I, so what, that means the South here in America, Dixie, but I... Yeah, well, they, they said that they, they, they're dropping it because, you know, the word Dixie is about down in the South and that it that's around, you know, Confederacy and, like, you know, they had slave labour, etc. And what they say is, is that they're meeting the moment. Well, what I say is that the Dixie Chicks are not meeting the moment. I think they're milking the moment. Sorry, yeah. Dixie Chicks, but that's just what I think. Like, I think that I think it's actually a bit bloody horrific, really, to tell you the truth. And I don't know. I probably am not going to go and buy that that album that they've released in the last 14 years. Yeah, I, I don't have any other albums. I'm not a country music person. Uh, oh, my I'm God, you're not. I'm going to have to I'm a rock and roll that. girl, okay? There is so much country rock stuff out there. Well, if it's country rock, I know, probably know it and, and like it. But just in general, hey, I don't. I'm not. I'm not saying I wouldn't listen to it. Uh, I like more, yeah, well, you know, stuff I would hear I'm on gonna, the radio. It's got to be at least a hit on the radio, so I know what the hell it is. You know. <laughs> oh my god. Hey, um, and there's another um country band too. Was they were called um Lady Appabellum or something like that, and now they're Antibellum, called Lady yeah. A. Be yeah, because Appa Bellman also too down in the south, is it? And so that's yeah. also related to um, slavery, et cetera. So they've actually changed their name to Lady A as well. Lady A. Okay. Yeah, they're now called Lady A because, you know, they can't be calling themselves Appa Bellum because it's, I don't know, offensive. All right. Apparently. Well, yeah, I know. Uh, pretty Don't soon understand. we're not even going to be able to have music now because there's so many songs that are related to the South, so many songs that are related to slavery, so many books, so many of this. Why don't we just throw Get rid of it all. Get rid of it. It's very fun. To, that's it. Get rid of all of it. Well, I mean, you know, what? we just get rid of the word white. Let's just get rid of that. Let's get, yep. it, get rid of the word that's white. That's very offensive. Let's get rid of, that's very, get rid of very offensive. Get rid of it. Let, let's sorry. get rid of color altogether, so we're not seeing. Get rid of colors. Color. No more Crayola. No more. Yep. No more Crayola. No more crayons. No more colors. No, no more watercolors. No. no nothing. Nope. And no blending either. We've got no blending of colors as well. Nope. I. So we're I, just, just take have, all the primary colors, have? mix them all together. Whatever that is, that's what it is. That's it. <laughs> all right. This is how bad it's getting. Okay. Are we going to yeah. have to take out the Crayola crayons and take out the white and the black and the brown and the green and the yellow now? And the red? I don't, I, I don't, I don't know, love. I mean, Come I don't on. know. Come on, it's in the context I, I, of how the hell you're saying it. Why the hell do these bands have to change their name unless that's what they meant when they named themselves that? If they believed and that was their name and that was the reason for their name and that was their intention. But if it's not, what the hell? Oh, look, I don't know. I think, again, like the whole thing's just bullshit, really. Like, I, and I don't know, if I was somebody that was coloured, I would probably be insulted that you've got these white bands. And it's not just bands and music either. Like, right? there's whole heaps of corporations that are doing it that are getting on this bandwagon about, you know what, I'm going to go and change my name or I'm going to change the name of my brand or my products or whatever it is in order for them to, I guess, like, you know, bask in the glory of Black Lives Matters and for them to, you know, to gain recognition, to gain popularity, to be seen, to be doing the right thing. At the end of the day, it's all about money. It's all about dollars because that's what they want. It's all about money. Yeah, all of it. Okay. Yeah. So, so I I feel that the whole Black Lives Matters thing with all of this sort of stuff that's going on is is that it's kind of become diluted and you don't really know what the actual primary message really is and that 
I don't know, all of these organisations that are doing this, like, you know, it looks like they're doing it for the right reasons, but are they really, like, what are, what are they really changing? Uh, yeah, that's like another show already, Byrne, okay? You're getting yeah, off I topic. Know. We'll end up on that and well, then, we'll, I don't know, <laughs> we'll just be here till tomorrow. All right? I'm telling you now. Don't get me on that. John, to John's got to cut us off way I, before. I then. have another fun. Let before. me show you a funny one. Yep. All right. Now, what is it? Come on. You know you believe this when you see this. All right. Number three here is definitely. Come on. Is this not true when you see it? It's about Chinese people. Listen, they say all listen. Chinese people look the same. The same as what? Yeah. What, are the, what do they look like? <laughs> they all you Chinese people look the same. Don't they say that for everybody? All you black people look the same. All you white people look the same. All you Latinos look the same. Don't they everybody say that about everybody? Well, yeah, I think so. I think I think they do. But I think particularly like Asians, like, you know, people go like, oh, you know, I can't recognize one from the other because like they all actually look the same. It's I ridiculous. Mean- <laughs> what the hell is everybody know. talking about? I don't know, love. I don't know. I, it goes back to the crayons. You call them Crayola. We call them crayons, right? No, no, no. We call them crayons. That. Crayola is the company that makes them. Oh yes, I know yeah, that. Yeah. Right. What? But I, I just it goes. It goes. It, it's back just to that, crazy doesn't... out there. Okay. It's just crazy. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. It's just. Like I said, you know, I think I put in one of the comments in our Facebook today that I am actually going to identify as pink, and that's not oh, pink, the rock okay. star, although right. I had my hair, like, you know, this long before she ever did, I might just say that. But I'm going to identify as pink as anybody offended by that because I happen to really love the colour pink, so I'm going to identify as pink now. So it's not going to be about I'm not white anymore. I am now pink. Okay, now you don't want to know what you just did, though? You just did what what every human being is doing today, which I can't stand. They are differentiating themselves from the human race. Here she goes. (laughs) Okay, I just want humans to be humans, okay? I don't care care what color you are. I don't care what religion you are. I don't care what race you are. I don't care what nationality you are. I don't care. You're a human being. We are all beautiful. God made us all beautiful. And if you're if yeah. you're an atheist and you didn't like I said that, I don't really give a shit today. Okay? <laughs> she, I really don't. I told you she was gonna go off the Richter scale peoples. She doesn't give a shit today, already. Not so today you, already, you don't because, think that look, God you don't created God, us. That's your thing. I, I'm okay with whatever you want to <laughs> believe in. See, I'm okay with that. But I believe in God, so it's my show and I can say it. Oh, it's oh it's it's my show and I can cry. You're if too, I want you're it. too. But, <laughs> you believe in God. Yeah. Yeah, no, I actually don't believe in God. That's oh, another I'm, show, I'm right? I'm sorry. I thought you did. I apologize. You know, she's going like, no, I don't. No, I don't. Actually. Okay, that's cool. That's another show, too. Yeah, yeah. That's good. Yeah, that's, we got that, that one that, coming on the end of go. July. We'll, that's we'll another got that show. one all covered. But and, anyway, <laughs> I just yeah. really, for you to say you identify as pink, you are separating yourself. I want everybody to get together. Okay, we don't need to be black, we don't need well, to be white, want, we don't need to be brown, we don't need to be red. Get, we don't I want everyone yellow. to get together too, right? It's but if one. I'm going to be but if I'm going to be put in a pigeonhole based on the majority, based on my skin color, then I get to choose my skin color. Oh, no, we're not putting like, you in a pigeonhole. Stop doing what everybody's doing out there. What are you doing? Oh, what about rainbows? I like rainbows. Leave the damn rainbow. That's cool. That's cool. That's naturally occurring. It's got all those different colors. Let me ask you a question. If you were a freaking dog, okay, and you were at daycare, and you were a brown and white dog, okay, yeah. and I was a brown, black, yellow, red, green dog, okay, and we were running around the backyard, I wouldn't give a shit what color you are. I just want to come smell your ass. That's all I want. <laughs> uh, isn't that the Look, truth? Man, you've just, dog, you just, just want to painted- smell each other. That's all. You have just painted a visual that I'm not going to be able to get rid of for days and days now. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to make a point. Dogs you are all different around. colors. They don't Skipping care what ass. color any other dog is. They don't, don't even care, care what, what size they are. Anybody. They don't care what kind they are. They I just know. want to know but if they're friendly or not. 
So do we have this? Is this really real then, right? Like, so because we're hearing all this shit storm around, like, about the media, okay? So the media are whipping up all of this stuff. Do we really have the majority of white people, white and inverted commas, actually feeling like they're being racist or they're being offensive towards people of colour? Does it really exist or is this something that's just being blown up by the media because of Black Lives Matter's protests and we've got all these companies now changing their names, we've got bands changing their names? I mean, Jesus Christ, if we go through our history and get rid of every single thing that offends us... Yeah, we have well, I don't know what we're going to be looking at, love. We'll be back I on get, the prairie. That's it. I'm well, offended well, by we'll I'm offended by the term buildings, white supremacy. Yeah, I mean, I'm offended by the term white supremacy, right? Well, like I don't, know, I don't believe that, in that. that. Well, not for me. I ain't got no supreme nothing. <laughs> Aren't okay? you the supreme queen? <laughs> I. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but not that. But <laughs> I, I do not have any white privilege. I'm not white supremacist. Okay, that was tagged by someone that's not white. Wouldn't you agree with that? Why would so, why would a white yeah. person say they're a white supremacist? I have got no idea. Okay, I, got, I've, I've so got no I don't idea. know. I, I just... didn't look it up. I don't know the history, so I don't know the facts. But it kind of no. would lead me to believe that someone of other than white coined that term? Well, I would say so. I mean, that you know, I'll, I'll, I'll do some research on that and look that up. But, I mean, I'm just saying from my perspective, you know, I find that whole thing offensive, like white privilege, white supremacy, that whole thing, I just find that offensive myself. Uh, and I've been well, called it's heaps ridiculous. of friggin' offensive you know, names There's no such thing lifetime. as the white friggin' uh privilege you know what it is it's whoever the hell is in charge that's what the privilege is it doesn't matter what color they are it doesn't matter yeah, what nationality or where they're from what's uh-huh. going on it's who's in charge there's your privilege that's power yep. power is the privilege that's it power it is, is the not power anything to do with the freaking color i'm telling you right now, i ain't got no damn privilege i haven't had privilege my whole life i've been discriminated against my whole life what the hell is it yeah what the hell nobody's gonna yep, go up to me and, and tell me i've been privileged okay they're coming up to you? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and like, the shut same, your mouth. Yeah, shut your mouth. It's, a, it's the same over here, though. Like, you know, like I would not say that I've had a privileged life or a privileged existence. I've been privileged enough to live in a country that's given me opportunities that I've taken advantage of so that I could lead a life of, like, my own choosing. Like there's yeah. definitely, you know, I, I would definitely say that I've been privileged enough to have that. But I would not say that I have, like, you know, that it's a white privilege that's been given to me. It's because not a white privilege. Time. You're an Australian living no. in Australia. You are privileged to live in a, a beautiful country. In Australia, yep. To me, I'm an Absolutely. American. I'm privileged to live in America, a beautiful country. Yeah. But it has yep. nothing to do with the that's color exactly of my right. skin. No. All exactly. Americans Couldn't are privileged to be here because there are third world countries that have nothing and they face death yep. every day and they pray they wake up. So for yep. any American to sit here and cry, oh, please, if you don't like it here, get the hell out. Go. Go somewhere yep. else. And and I, I think that's the thing too. Like this is what I'm saying about what's real though, right? Like is... I think the opportunities for people are very, very similar no matter what your skin. I mean, especially in places, I guess, like Australia and America. And I know there are people that will argue and go like, no, there's systemic racism that if you've got something that, you know, you're of a different skin colour, you don't get the same opportunities as somebody who's white as in educational jobs or whatever it is. I'll tell you over here that in Australia... We've got laws, right? And if you go and apply for a position and everybody that's pretty much advertising jobs now will say that we're an equal opportunity employer, which means that they will look at everybody, whether you're, no matter what your race, no matter what your colour, no matter whether you're gay, you're straight, you know, you're rainbow, you're bi, whatever it is, that they're equal opportunity employers, right? 
But what actually does happen is, is that if you identify as Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander over here in Australia, you do not necessarily have to have the same qualifications as a white person in order for you to get an interview for that job. Now, there's a privilege. That is a black privilege, right? Because of your past history and you identify as, as, that, that, as that race or that colour, you actually get more opportunities than what I would get as a white person. I would have to have studied and have those qualifications in order to be even considered for that position. So that's what I call a privilege. And if you're going to go back then and talk about colour, then it would be a black privilege, correct? Well, we, we have that here, and, be, and because this has got me so frustrated, I already forgot what it's called. I feel like an idiot, but I forgot what it was called. <laughs> <laughs> but they've had that here for ooh, probably since the 60s. And then yeah. what started happening in the 90s is that, well, I'm only going to speak about it in uh, the police and fire departments and EMS, the Emergency Medical Services, because that's what I know, is that... Yep. Um, uh, black and Latinos weren't getting promoted, so they had to give them like points to just be able to let them have the opportunity to get promoted. But there really there's no reason for that because if any person studies, they got the job, they got on the yeah. job, taking the test that everybody else took. Well, then you should mm. study and do what you need to do to get to the next position. Just like the next guy. I'm not saying yeah. that there isn't discrimination. Of course, there's, I was discriminated against. Okay, I understand mm. that that's still out there. Okay, but yeah. everybody does have the opportunity to get better in their positions. Yeah. They have the opportunity. I'm not saying yeah. that racism doesn't exist. It does. I'm not saying discrimination doesn't happen. It does. Okay, yeah. but it's not systemic. It is just not blanketed mm -hmm. everywhere, all over every company, every position, everything going on. That's not true. Yeah. And, and that's true. why, like, that, that's why I love the, some of the topics that you and I talk about because it's, it's people, like, are just so reactive and they're so emotional. I mean, obviously it's a really, really emotional topic. And now we've got these big names, like these massive companies that are changing names on their products. You know, we've got big names like the Dixie Chicks dropping the Dixie and, you know, now they're just called the Chicks, etc. You know, it's the same as I don't agree with... Um, over here in Australia, we don't have, you know, a lot of women that are as CEOs or in politics. And so we've had this raging debate for years about whether we should just have quotas that get filled, right? So in other words, you get the job because of your sex, maybe not necessarily yeah. because you're the right person for the job or you've got the right, comp like, you know, um, Competies, or whether you've got the right experience, or you've got the right, right qualifications. Listen, simply okay, unless it's a, a specific and job I that has to be specific and... per gender, and this is the best example yeah. I'm going to give you right now. Okay. Yeah. All right. Only men should be walking into a sperm bank and donating sperm. Okay. <laughs> Pretty simple, isn't it? Right. Yes. Okay, you have yeah. to have a man donate sperm. It's pretty easy. Don't get offended because you can't walk in there as a woman and donate sperm. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> okay, but for any other job, unless if it's it doesn't matter the gender, you, it's just whatever the damn yeah. criteria is for the job. If if yeah. someone is hiring a graphic artist and the salary is fifty thousand dollars, and the only criteria is you went to college and graduated with an arts and humanities degree with a major in graphic design and that you've had mm. two years on the job as a graphic artist, period. Doesn't matter what mm. gender you are. doesn't matter what religion, what color, and religion. Mm. doesn't matter. That's mm. how it should be. I'm I agree with that. Gender and, but the, but what, what is all this bullshit then? Like, you know, so like I said, as a woman, frankly, I actually find it a bit offensive as a female to go, okay, so the message is, is that the only way that I could make it to the top, like in, you know, politics or become a CEO or whatever it is, is that I get there based on, you know, the fact that I've got a vagina. 
as opposed right, to get, a penis. Right, you got to have sex I or actually you, or you find have, that, have oral sex find with that, the friggin' manager, right? Yeah, I, I find that offensive, like, because well, for me, disgusting. I would rather know. Yeah, I'd rather know that I bloody can get there myself. Like, you know, that it's because of my abilities and the bloody hard work I put in and the sacrifices that I make. I mean, you've got to make fucking sacrifices to achieve those kind of levels of thing. And you know what? If we've got women that are out there that are believing and buying into that bullshit, then we, we actually haven't changed. It's not because we're putting, we're, we're moving towards equality. You know, I think it's hypocritical. And the same as I think it's fucking hypocritical for a lot of these organisations to be dropping their names and all that kind of stuff like L'Oreal, right, you know, they're dropping the word white um, and fair to replace We got, we got a picture on this, don't we? Number five, yeah. we got a picture for you. Yeah. You know, so No, L'Oreal not Harry. Just, <laughs> not, yeah. not answer my uh, mother. Not yet. <laughs> Number yeah. five, um, L'Oreal, L'Oreal. But, L'Oreal are doing this a lot on their, like, skin whitening products, okay? So it's predominantly in their India and Asia um, Pacific that they're doing it, and it caused an absolute media shitstorm because everybody's going, oh, my God, they're dropping the word white, they're dropping the word white. So then they had to come out and say, no, we're not actually doing a blanket eradication. They are the words, a blanket eradication of the word white, this is that we are changing their, our, our skin whitening products to be, you know, glow as opposed to fair, et cetera. But, now, well, look, love, if you want to go and whiten there you your go, skin. There you go, Burn. There it is, yeah. Like, if you want to go and whiten your skin, that's obviously a personal choice. And they're now trying to jump on this and say, you know, it's because of, it's offensive and it's racist and they're the racist and they're giving women this perception that, you know, you're less if you want to go and whiten your skin. So you're less of a person, right? If you want to go and whiten your skin. But love, what about us white chicks that go and get spray tans all right. day, every day? Right. You right. know, mm-hmm. so we want to go and be darker, right? Right, right. Because for some reason, we think that it's attractive to be of a darker skin. We think we look healthier, you know, our skin glows more or whatever it is. I mean, Christ, some of these chicks that you see on bloody Essex or whatever it's called in London, they've got that many spray tans on, you know, like you, you, you can't tell whether they're, they're Caucasian or whether they're not. Well, the whole point is what the hell are they changing that for? What's, I don't see what the hell is wrong with that. Isn't that what it's called? They're, is there another term? Is there another what, term? What, they're going to... No, no. Well, they're they're going to call call it like you know. So replace white and fair with glow. Come on. Well, what are, are we going right. to replace darkening or blackening? Are we going to replace that? My, my my point exactly. Like I mean, this I just think this is getting so ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And the it's fact absolutely the ridiculous. Is, is, and it's all about money. Just like you yeah. said that you think the Dixie Chicks change their name and have an app only to take advantage of this situation. Yeah. So are all these damn companies. They're all jumping on it. Yeah. Lori, uh, that's exactly. bullshit what L'Oreal is doing. That's bullshit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, honest and to God, I don't see anything wrong with that. No, and they're, they're, it's all just about the dollars. It's all about money because you know it what it is, is they're going, okay, we're just going to try and get on the bandwagon and we're going to co- go and try and capture these markets. We've got Nestle, right? So Nestle over here, so they're changing. We've got two lollies that have been part of, like, my childhood all my life. So Redskins and Chico's, okay? So they're, they're confectionery. Okay. Like right? lollipops? So, and they're saying... Lollipop? No, no, no. Redskins no. are like... Yeah, no, Redskins are like a, a, a long kind of, like, chewy red... Okay. okay. Yummy kind oh, of licorice, thing licorice. that you eat. Yeah, and then licorice. Chico's are like little, a little dark Chico baby things, right? Uh, okay. So... They're changing them because Redskins are offensive to Native American Indians and they're changing Chicos because Chicos are offensive to Latinos, okay? so Oh, man. Yeah, and it's causing a bloody shitstorm over here in Australia because people are going, it's been part of our Australian iconic, you know, since the day dot, et cetera. So they're asking for the names to be um, given back to the Australian people, et cetera. But, again, you know, like... 
Is that offensive? I mean, you know, could we not, if it's a Chico, then it's a Chico baby, so a baby's going to be offended because did, it's did the Did they ask of the, baby? the Latinos, did they take a survey and ask Latinos no. if it was offensive? No. Did they take and a survey I mean. and ask American Indians if they were offended? No. Wouldn't that be smart but, to do? Well, it would be smart to do, but again, it just shows you if we're talking about power and we're talking about money, that's what these these organizations that's are doing. That's all it you is. Know, what, that's all it yeah. is. So and, over here, we've got yeah. the Aunt Jemima thing going on. All right, Aunt Jemima yeah. is a logo, okay, for a pancake mix, instant pancake mix. The top yeah. version was the very old initial uh, Aunt Jemima that was yeah. portrayed and the company did state that it was based on a mammy character okay from yeah. a, a popular minstrel show in the late uh 1800s okay and yeah. that wonderful woman is her name is nancy green and she was uh born into slavery in kentucky and then when her the family was moving north they asked her to come with them to be their nurse and a caretaker and she agreed and they went uh, to the world's fair and while they were there the company asked her if she would become the living version of the Aunt Jemima character at the world's fair to, and make pancakes from the pancake mix and the Aunt Jemima was born the living legend and she was then hired by the pancake company and paid to go all around the country doing shows and promotions for the company. And she was uh, paid until she died. Now, mm. she wasn't paid tons of money where she died a millionaire. Okay, but she did end up being hired and was paid for. So now th that company, which is owned by Quaker Oats, which is owned by Pepsi, Pepsi Company, uh, is changing that logo now because they said that they realized that it is uh, a racist stereotype for a black woman uh, back in the days of the Civil War and slavery. Mm -hmm. So they're going to change that logo now. And there's, I've heard they're still keeping it as a black woman, but as a more professional, uh, modern day black woman. Now, let me tell you something about Nancy Green. That woman was a mother. A wonderful mother who was doing all kinds of nursing, had that wonderful talent and ability to be a nurse. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then she had, she had this job. She was a wonderful woman. She went on to become the leader of a ministry. Okay. In the Baptist community up North in Chicago. I mean, mm -hmm. she went on to become a well-known sought after leader in her community. So, when I was growing up, first of all, they don't even teach us that kind of stuff. When I looked at Aunt Jemima, mm -hmm. I never sat there yeah. and said, oh, look at that black woman. She's a, she was a slave. Mm -hmm. I never thought that at all, ever. Mm -hmm. Actually, I would always say to myself, that woman is so beautiful. I would love to her to make me pancakes. I would say that. Mm -hmm. She seems loving. That's what I thought. Mm -hmm. I didn't know crap mm -hmm. about them what her history was. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Burn? Yeah, I mean, so has anybody asked, um, I mean, Aunt Jemima, she would have relatives still here? Like still? Yes, so they're suing the company now because of the money issue, because of the whatever, the dividends and having her trademark and blah, 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 blah. They're going to be suing the company. So, again, it all comes down to dollars, hey? It all comes down to dollars. But anyway, so we'll see what happens. It's not the only one. Uh, all other kinds of things from over 100 years old. Uh, we have Mrs. Butterworth syrup. We have Uncle Ben's rice. They're all changing the logo now. This is and, again, they're, they're, so these companies are doing that because they're meeting the market, right? Yeah, so that, I mean, I can't they speak for are. everyone. I, I mean, you know, uh, nowadays we talk about how there aren't really that many World War II veterans left here in the United States, I'm sure, from in Australia, too. 
Yeah. Because they're of the ages, they're in their high 90s and even 100s now. Yeah. They're, they're almost all gone. Yeah. yeah. I don't even think anyone after them is even really taught. I'm not speaking for Australia. I'm talking about our horrific mm. education system here in America. Okay. Yeah. The extent of the civil war and slavery. I mean, they just briefly touch on it. We certainly didn't learn much about it. Mm. So I never thought anything. And I had all kinds of ethnicities and races and religions in my class. And yeah. not one of them ever said anything or was worried about who was on the Aunt Jemima box or mm. Mrs. Butterworth or Uncle Ben. Who, who's Mrs. Buttersworth? What, what's she, that? She's on, she's a uh, syrup. It's syrup. Maple syrup. Right. That's the logo and for maple this, syrup. And is the, this, the bottle is, this is the shaped one that they're like changing it? a woman. A woman, a black woman. Yeah. About in, you know, 2014, Dove, you know, like Dove, that brand Dove? Dove, yeah. Yeah, right. So like their body wash. Yeah. So in 2014, they did this campaign where they made up all of these different bottles in the shape of women's bodies, right? So, you know, you had hourglass and, you know, whatever it is. And they did it because they wanted to show the diversity and celebrate the diversity of women and for uh -huh. women to feel included. So this is in 2014, right? They got absolutely ripped apart and vilified because the bottles were white. You know how um, Dove bottles are white? Yeah. So because they were white. So they had actually, like, you know, African-American and, you know, coloured women commenting on their, their campaign saying it was racist because the bottles were white and they were But it wasn't not the bottles. The actual chocolate. wash is white coloured. Yeah. No, it's no, the these bo bottles are bottle? white. No, no, these are white. They're white. No, oh, the actual bottle was white? The actual bottle is white. But okay. the reason I'm bringing that up, right, is, is because mm -hmm. how can you win then? Like, or like, what's the point in all of this kind of like being offended, or, et cetera? Because they got vilified because the bottles were actually white and saying, you know what, you're not celebrating diversity and that beauty comes in all forms because you've only got white bottles. You don't actually have like, you know, chocolate or brown or, or dark bottles in yeah. the, the campaign. They got vilified because, you know, women didn't want to be put into like six different body and stereotypes. They got vilified because women were offended that they were making it about women's bodies and they thought it was sexualized, et cetera. So they stopped the entire campaign. And this, I guess, is what I'm talking mm. about, is, is it doesn't matter what people do. You're going to have people that are going to be offended. You're going to have people that are going to speak out about it. So with these companies at the moment, they're riding on this oh, wave. Oh, they're riding a wave. They're riding a wave. Yeah, they're riding this oh, yeah. wave. And I, I think it's just because they're riding the wave again because of the dollars. The same as with Dove. The Dove did oh. that because... They may have the message was that they might have wanted to celebrate the diversity of women, but obviously they didn't do enough background or they didn't do enough, like, you know, testing prior. They went and spent billions of dollars on this, put yeah. it out there, and they got vilified for it. That means that you just can't keep everybody happy, though, right? Well, you can't, but, Byron, uh, let me see if you agree with this. I got a, a graphic here for you with the uh, number seven, this old woman. Take, take, and I apologize, I don't mean to call her a woman, that's just to get John to get the right one here. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm offended. I'm, I'm offended. offended, I know. Oh. I don't mean to make love? it offended. Anyway, Have uh, I, offended I think her today? name is J.D. James. No, J.D. James, the woman. All right, give me J.D. James. J.D. James. All right, well, that's good anyway. All right, put that one back up. Either way, it's okay. Put that one back up. What are you doing? Uh, hate All begets right. hate. Violence begets violence. Toughness begets a greater toughness. We must meet the forces of hate with the power of love. So this is Martin Luther King. Alrighty. And this man, I mean, I don't think there's a person alive, I hope there isn't anyway, who doesn't understand who this man 
is and was and the legacy that he's left our world. And I especially love like that first line where it goes, hate begets hate and violence begets violence. Because yes. if we're going to truly get to seeing each other as human beings and living together in, you know, some semblance of harmony and from a humanitarian perspective, we need to understand that no good has ever, ever come from violence. Never. And never. Like no, no. good's ever come from it. Like violence in any kind of shape or any kind of form. And I think that some of the ways that we can heal is is like just watch your language, you know, watch your words because words can be used as violence but also too what's your intention behind your words, right? Like so if your intention is is that I'm going to pretend to be going along with this cause because it's going to escalate my power and my control, like whether that's through, you know, money or whether that's through like I get more people buying my product or whether I get a raise or whether I get, you know, a, a promotion or whatever it is, if you're going to have to walk over somebody else in order to do that, you need to have a good, long, fucking hard look at yourself. Because, well, you that's the individual. You're not and that's just the power good, trip. You're not being it doesn't good, matter what color they are. It doesn't matter what race you are. It doesn't matter what religion are. That's, that's the it. individual. And that's I wish everybody absolutely. else would look at this. As yeah, an individual's absolutely. behavior, actions. Be, be self-responsible. And part of being self-responsible is understanding that someone else is going to have a different opinion to yours. Yeah, and you, you don't, don't have, have to, agree to agree with it. You, it's okay. Yeah, you, People are allowed to have to different agree. opinions that you don't agree yes. with. Exactly right, you know, but it doesn't mean that you also have the right to shove your opinion in somebody else's face. So well, that's the problem we're to... having right now here in America, yep. okay, with the Black Lives Matter uh, adjusted movement. Uh, so, you know, we got, all, got people and groups doing things that just jumped on board because of the opportunity. These yeah. are not the original people that were so upset and appalled, okay, by what the officer did to George Floyd yeah. and were in protest against yeah. that. These are now we have terrorist groups and we have uh, other groups yeah. and they're, they're claiming it's mm. the far left uh, for you. That would mean uh, the far Democratic left liberals here. That's what that yeah. would mean. And, and they're claiming all kinds of things and that groups are taking yeah. advantage of it, okay, and... They're scaring the hell out of people that won't allow them to have their own opinion. Mm. And yeah. that in itself, there you go. Political correctness is a weapon used to silence people who tell the truth. Yeah. All right. That I, certainly happens quite often. What a true statement. I, yeah, you know absolutely. How many people and won't open their mouths right now. They are scared yeah. to death. To open their yep. mouth. Yep, exactly. Well, and because if they say, also, oh, I don't believe in the Black Lives Matter, I believe all lives matter because people tried to yeah. do that. They got condemned yeah. because they said all lives yeah. matter. Yeah. I know. And the messaging about that too is like, it's so confusing, right? Because if I say that to people, because that's personally what I agree with like I agree that all lives matter and when I say all lives I'm talking like human non-human animals I'm talking all lives right right and because everything if we has actually, life yeah if we actually had that same level of love and value towards all lives would we be having conversations like this right now the answer would be no because we would all have that same sense of value or a similar sense of value. Well, and I that's can tell what's you missing. that if everyone this, uh, this whole thing would act is just in love everybody. and treat each person with kindness, it would go yeah. so far. And oh, actions yeah. speak better than words. I have a great yeah. graphic for you on skeletons. I want you to take a look at this, Bernie. <laughs> okay. This is how skeletons? it should be out there in the world. <laughs> This is so perfect for the time you look at this image. You don't know if it's a boy and a girl, a girl and a girl, a boy and a boy, a black man and a white girl, a white man and an Asian girl. You know nothing. Just the simplicity of the connection and the beauty of two human beings in love.
Is that not mm -hmm. true and beautiful? Yeah. That I love is it. how it should be. It's, it is. And, and the animals teach us that too, right? Like, I mean, I've got a cat and a dog, right? So, and a lot of people go like, oh, you know, my dog hates cats or my cat hates dogs or whatever it is. These two animals I brought into my life like a week apart they sleep together, they eat together, they play together. Neither of them even really know that one's a dog and one's a cat. All they know is, is that they're brothers, right? And it, animals can teach us so much if we do that. So if we actually came from that place ourselves, and you can start it today, every single person that's listening to this, and, you know, those of you that aren't, you need to listen to it, because we're funny and we make and we make a whole lot of sense. But if every single person went out there today and they just came from that place and we created these cells of love and changed our thinking and changed our vibration and changed our energy, imagine what we could change around the world. Exactly. Now that, that, now, if you now would just power. treat somebody the way you want to be treated, I mean, that's the golden rule. We can't even, that is so simple from far yeah. back in our human history. Just treat yeah. somebody the way you want to be treated before you do yeah. something or say something. Think, how yeah. would you feel if someone said that to you? How would you feel if yeah. someone acted that way towards you? Yeah. It's so simple. And, and Act and I think kindness. what I think what's really friggin' unfortunate about this whole scenario that's happening at the moment is I don't know what it's like in America, but in Australia, what it's doing is it's actually creating more division. So we're actually getting further apart because of what it's rising up. I mean, you know, like I've, I see people that are saying, you know, I was not racist before, but I am now because they're white people and they feel that just because of the colour of their skin, like you said, they're too freaking scared to say anything or if they do say something, they get cut down and not just by dark people saying that to them either, like white people are cutting white people down because you can't have a difference of opinion, you can't have a different point of view. Oh, you, yeah. know, that's that, you know, that's the opposite happening in America of that's, ethics. That's huge between uh, all, all colours and mainly white people. Listen to this. So we've got our presidential election and we've got Trump who's yep. running for the Republicans and we've got Biden who's running for the Democrats. The Democrats yep. are screaming at everybody. If, if a person opens their mouth and says they're a Republican and they're voting Republican, they're attack them verbally, mm. physically. I mean, the person can't even just give their opinion. Mm. Who the hell is someone to treat somebody like that? And I bet again, it's democratic. We're again, supposed to be able to vote for whoever the hell you want. I Leave know, them but, alone. So I wake, vote for who wake I want. up, people. Like, wake up, people. Like, have a look at what's really happening around you because these people that are in these massive, like, powerful, you know, machines that are operating behind the scenes, they're the ones that are pulling the strings. You think that you're being given your right and your freedom to voice yourself. Trust me, you haven't. All you're doing is you're being fucking manipulated by these major organizations because they either want power or they want the money that equals power to it. That's, a, that's the main root of the whole evil right there is the money yeah. and the power. That yeah. is what treats yeah. people so in, inhuman, yeah. inhumane. That's right there. Like it, 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 It's no coincidence. Like you just take America, right? So you guys, you know, You've, we've had, like, coronavirus going over there, which is still raging. You've got Black Lives Matters. You've got George Foreman, you know, with that terrible George Foreman. You know, George Foreman grill? Oh, not George Foreman. What is it? Floyd. Sorry, Poor George. George Floyd. Is George, still, is George, George still Foreman. Around? We'll talk another time. Okay. George Floyd. Yeah. George Floyd. And you've got, and now you've got, like, um, protests, and then now you've got a presidential election. I mean, is it a coincidence that all of these things are happening in the first six months of this year and basically the country is turning in on itself? Oh, yeah, yeah. A lot of it is definitely planned as it goes along. The opportunity is there. That's what yeah. we talk about yeah. in police language. We call it uh, the modus operandi. Okay, you have uh, the means and the opportunity and the motive. Yeah. Right here. Yeah. They're using yep. it. Yeah. So. And I Bernie, guess you're not you going to believe this. Like you're not. 
But our well, show uh, is almost over. <laughs> <laughs> You're never going to believe it, right? Where did that hour go? All good things must come to an end. They sell, tell us that, right? That's a book, I believe. So <laughs> that's what they tell us. Well, I want us both to just is. give our final point on how one thing can help. Let's each of us, what's going to be our part in making this world a better place to stop this? Doing what I said before, being mindful of like what you're thinking and what you're saying and what your intention is behind it. Because if you're doing something because you're trying to manipulate somebody or something in order to, you know, better yourself and you're disregarding somebody else's feelings or experiences, et cetera, be mindful of what you're saying and what you're doing. Add a girl. Do it from that, love, people. Very good. Uh, that will make a big difference. And me, I mm -hmm. try to treat every person that I encounter every single day of my life the way I would want to be treated. And yeah. I want to treat them with kindness and with love. That's what I want to do the majority of the time. Sometimes I don't, and I don't like myself if that happens. I let the best get ahead of me there, but that's what I'm trying to do. And if I could do that, you know, that's, that's you and I now. That's two people too, right? that are trying to make yeah. this a better world every single day with our practices. Yep. Love you, Ford. Love you, Ford. Love you too, love. So, you know what? Challenge to everybody out there too, you know, try and do something. Think about that. Think about something you can do for yourself. Like what can you do today that's going to go out there and make a difference? You know, that's, that's, that's not related to violence and that's not related to racism or not related to being discriminatory, or not related to being offended or offensive. Not related to money, not related to power. Yeah. Just related to relationships, being a human being. Yep. Be a good human, peoples. There you Try. go. Be good people. Be like good. the dogs. Just run around the yard and smell their ass. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> Did you have to bring that up again? Like right at the end? I kind of oh, like sorry, you know that I had a while. Yeah, I mean, you would have to, wouldn't oh. you? Like, bring it up. Well, Nightmares if anybody has a comment and they'd like to tell us anything that we talked about during the show, please send us an email to talk at rsvppodcast.com. We'd love to hear it. And Bernie or I will definitely get back to you. We don't have no virtual we assistants. Will. We'll take care nah, of it. No, nah. no, nah, it's just us. It's just us. Are you going to spin that wheel, woman? I, we don't have time. You know what? Let's do it on oh, Monday got... and we'll do it live for the people. Oh, we're going we to go no live. Lucky you. You get to see us again. How exciting. Ciao, Bella. Talk to you All again. right, dog. See you later. Bye. Bye. Welcome to RSVP. Listen to the show at your own risk. We will be discussing all taboo subjects like religion, sex, violence, and even politics. You should be ready for controversy, disagreements, face-offs, and maybe some downright rumbles. We'll sit tight and get ready for this week's episode. And by the way, if you're squeamish about obscenities, don't listen to our fucking show!